taken by the British policemen were removed from the base by the US military, never to be seen again. In 2009, Larry King and CNN shed new light on the case by bringing in new eyewitnesses confirming the story of the first night of the sightings. I was there on the first night. Uh, I went off base to, uh, 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 to check out a possible aircraft downing. I thought it was an aircraft crash and I took a, my team with me and when we got to the uh, wooded line off the east gate, uh, we discovered a uh, craft of unknown origin. It was triangular in shape. On the ground? On the ground. Did you touch it? Touched it, walked around it, photographed it. Um, we did a full investigation of it on the ground for 45 minutes. With this exceptional testimony from a retired U.S. Air Force security officer live on CNN, confirming the story of several other eyewitnesses, you might expect it to lead to some kind of official reaction. Does the Rendlesham case actually tell us straight out that there is another reality in the midst of our lives able to come and go as it pleases? In other countries, UFO observations were made continuously. In Brazil and the huge Amazon area, UFO and ETs were observed almost on a daily basis. You know, historically, Brazil is one of the uh, major countries as far as uh, UFO sightings and contacts with aliens is concerned. Now, we have, we have all sorts of cases, and they are spread all over the country. Now, the, some of the most astounding cases in the UFO history happened in Brazil. We're talking about landings, we're talking about face-to-face -face contact with aliens, which are getting rare for some reason. And we talking about also sightings with multiple witnesses. Sightings in the middle of the cities, like uh, two or three thousand people seeing a UFO. But what about Russia and the former Soviet 